Welcome to the winter 2024 anime season preview. We have watched episode one of 34 different anime this season, and we're going to talk about that. Somehow we're still alive. I'm okay. I swear. <laughs> I just had a blood vessel <laughs> pop. That's okay. I'm fine. Uh, a few notes, sort of disclaimers before we go in. A few of these we did skip out partway through the episode. Yes. Because we felt we figured it out at that point. Didn't need to watch the entire thing. These are all anime that are airing uh, for the first time in this season. So it's no season two, season threes, nothing ongoing, no sequels, in other words. Right. Uh, and that counts things like Shaman King Flowers, which is the follow on to Shaman King. Uh, so which I was like totally lost on. Yeah, for me too. I've, <laughs> you know, I've read a good chunk of Shaman King. I've watched some of the anime and I was lost. So I was like, okay, this is clearly, you know, building off of that. But we watched a bunch of stuff. And uh, so we're going to talk about it. So let's dig in to oh, yes. the anime of the seven. And we will start with seventh time loop. The villainous enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. I would say in a lot of ways, this uh, picked off some of the themes of the series. Because another one of those villainous, you know, reborn as the villainous. Right. Some genre shows, but dang, it's bloody. Yeah, um, just like those first few scenes, uh, uh, scenes of it, and it's pretty dramatic, uh, melodramatic, one might say. Um, main concept is the uh, girl in question was the villainous in you know the the game reincarnated, um, and immediately was like, nope, I'm out. And so she found a completely different life, went off and did that. Uh, and then a uh, uh, war happened and she died in the war. Then reincarnated again. Uh, with like, nope, completely <clears throat> different, goes off, completely different life, dies in a war. Uh, <laughs> loop, loop, loop. Um, now it's the seventh time loop. And without getting into spoilers, it's clear that kind of like her goal now is to stop that war. <laughs> Yeah, because because they they she doesn't really say how she dies because you don't really need to know because yeah. after the first when you see the first sequence that you're introduced to the anime you're like oh oh wait she's supposed to okay now we're going into the reincarnation loop and literally mm -hmm. it's just like oh yeah and I died in the war oh yeah I died in the war and I did all these wonderful things what led a successful and fulfilling life died in the war. I was really happy died in the war. You know, it's just like, okay. And, you know, we, so we get to that point where, you know, she figures it out that maybe this is the thing that she needs to do. But the premise is, is really interesting because by the time she's on the seventh loop, she's had six lives and she's had six different experiences, skill sets that she's taken carrying from life to life. That's the other part of it. She's remembering everything from life to life. So yeah, she's moving forward. And it's funny how she deals with the situation that gets her i don't think this is a spoiler mm -hmm. that makes her the villainess when she gets exiled from a court right mm -hmm. and so finally on the seventh one she's just like oh yeah i can just do things whatever you know <laughs> and like she just turns around walks out and the, and the guy's just like but i'm not done denigrating you yet you have to say she's like you know practically giving him the finger she's like yeah whatever dude <laughs> walking out the door it was a nice i think it's an it, it was a nice change for this little subgenre of of anime that we have of, mm -hmm. of villainesses trying to to change things mm -hmm. I, yeah. I was i was pleasantly surprised agreed um i also find it funny that villainous is now a subgenre <laughs> yeah right you can use that <clears throat> from now on um so yeah that's a that's a that was a, a pleasant surprise Ooh. as was a sign of affection oh uh, this oh. might be my top pick yeah, is, of the yeah. season. The one I'm going to kind of come back to over and over. Um, the pink haired girl in the center there is Deaf. And it is a romance series uh, of uh, uh, the light blue haired guy uh, and yes. her and the various folks around her. So obviously a silent voice comes up in the discussions. Right. The difference here is that nobody is dealing with the the bullying in the past. Um, these are all you know characters right. just uh, uh, coming together here, and so it's more about how to establish that relationship. 
Um, and it does some really cool things yeah. with that in that uh, typically when you see things from her perspective, they lower the volume on the audio dramatically. Exactly. Yeah. So you're you're getting a sense of what's going on the same way someone would with vibrations or whatever. And apparently she is, I, I forget the term, but like she has a slight, she can, she can hear a little bit um, because she has the little um, um, ear things in there. Um, so she's picking up a little bit on the audio around her. And so you really get more of a sense of her experience. It, it was, um, you know, when we first saw this coming up, <clears throat> we were just like, oh, okay, just a, maybe a rom-com. Um, something happens on yeah. the subway and some accidental thing happens. And, oh, isn't this nice? Is this going to be a rom-com? So then the accidental thing happens on the subway and it turns out it is, it is turning into a rom-com, but then you discover she's deaf and the whole, or you actually kind of know this, yeah. but you know, they, they meet and you're just, and it just, I think what's interesting is, is and what's going to grab you all into this, into this anime is her reactions to things that she's able to do. Mm -hmm. And it really, really does uh, to Brent's point. <clears throat> it really, <clears throat> when you go and look at her life, they really try hard to make sure that you're in that life. Like you, mm -hmm. you don't really hear things that well and you see it from her perspective. So like if she's looking at somebody and they're talking and she turns away, you don't know what that person's saying. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, yep. you know, and, and she does, and this is not a hardship anime either yeah. for her. She's been born this way. She's been this way in her entire life. She is navigating through her life as a normal person who happens to be deaf in Japan. Mm -hmm. And we're not getting a whole lot, at least in episode one, we didn't get a whole lot of the stigmata. You're deaf, you're deaf, <laughs> you know, it's none of that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of nice to have this yeah. thing going on here. And that, that is a weirdly positive as the relationship starts and I'm just going to leave it at that yeah. because it's it, cause I don't really don't want to talk about the, the, the light blue hair guy because he's yeah. kind of cool actually. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I completely agree. I think one of the things that separates this from a silent voice is that a silent voice is about characters coming to grips with what that means of being deaf or having a deaf friend or so forth and so on, or falling in love with somebody who's deaf. These are people who are, this is the thing. I, you know, I, yep. th 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 they're not surprised. They're not shocked. They're just, you know, going about their daily lives and then just navigating around that. So that's, that's one of the things that this, it's, that kind of attracts me to the show is that it's a factor, but everyone's and, very mature about it. <laughs> right. And, but when you get to the end and the thing happens again, and I'm not going to spoil it because you guys, you guys got to watch this. But when you get to the end of the episode and her reaction to the thing she does, you're just like, oh, my God, you're so cute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Uh, moving on to Brave <laughs> Bang Brave Earn, which I got completely confused about. I thought this was part of the, uh, the Yusha or Brave Mecha franchise. It is not. Uh, but it's using some uh, definitely a lot of uh, big name mecha talents. Boy, huh. certainly an episode that ah. can be engaged. Ah. <laughs> I can't look to my left anymore. Anymore, that left hand turn was just something else. Ah, yeah. Ah. So it is. It is set in a world of um, hardcore military otaku mecha, right? So they yeah. are. Gunmetal gray, kind of very straight, more sort of battle mech, battle tech kind of style mecha. Yeah. And uh, and then a super robot shows up, basically, without getting to spoilers again. And and I should point out, like, we're gonna talk a lot about what happens in these episodes. Like we yeah. have to. Um, so it is almost a super robot show inserted into a more realistic, grounded right. sci-fi mecha series. You're gonna you're gonna spend the first half of it marveling at, you know. I think you and I were talking about this about how they were getting kind of the military stuff right. Yeah, chain of command, orders, how they're doing things. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically uh, Japan and America are having joint exercises. So it's not there's no war happening in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's joint exercises, and and um, you know one guy deal, you know the Japanese our Japanese hero dealing with things and. You know the American guy dealing, you know, dealing with stuff, and you know, there, there are a couple of moments of odd, weird, proportionate muscle 
drawings. Yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of weird. You just, just roll with it. But it's just kind of interesting because actually the tech is also yeah. very much like utilitarian. It's it's mm -hmm. not sleek like what you see in the picture here. No. And it's more like pat labor. It's more like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, um, things like that where it's very everything's functional. Yeah. Uh, the battle scenes are really neat. And then you and then the thing happened. Then they, they handed the script to the writer of Mazinger Z. Literally. <laughs> and, and, and you're just like, and you're just like, oh, okay. The thing's happening. Great. Okay, the thing's happening. And you're getting invested in the show, and and you know, mankind's getting his butt handed to it. And oh, oh by the way, don't let me forget to talk about the product placement. And yeah. um it's but mankind's getting his butt handed to it, and then Da, 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 the music comes in and you have the singing and it's like from back 1983 and then, <laughs> you know, here we go and da, 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 you Japanese guy get inside the thing and, and do the thing it's literally that and, and we, we were just so confused at first we're just like uh and here's what's interesting like he gets into the mecca and there's you know the classic you know heavy rock guitar yes anthem playing and he's fighting and he says what is this song i'm hearing yeah they're doing this song when brent goes they're doing this song i'm like no they're not oh my god they are <laughs> so something's going on in this yeah, show yeah. <laughs> yeah very meta um and, and product placement product placement so we're watching after they're doing part of the joint exercises and and the the american lieutenant comes to the japanese lieutenant and he goes, let me get you a beer. And he's holding the beer, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, that's Kona Brewery bottle of I think it's it's golden uh, the golden wave. And, and, and clear, sure he enough, said, like, like he he said, give me beer. And he says, I'll have a Kona. Yeah. <laughs> I so this is brought to you by Kona beer. Have some. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was enjoyable. It, don't get us wrong. This was thoroughly enjoyable. Absolutely. But it was just weird. It, and it was absolutely on the level of, of like, you know, the label on Kona is always visible, right? It's always yeah. there in the middle of the shot. Like, it's clearly product placement. Interesting. But uh, I, I, should I should also point out, um, the men look fine, and the girls are all Moe characters. Uh, yeah. They, as you can see, like, notice... All the girls are in the front of its image. Yes. All the guys are in the back because it's they they went they they, they, they chose where to spend the money on the animation on exactly. terms of character development. Yes. Yes. Um okay, let's move on to Buchigiri. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> Which is God. I think the most shown in anime of the season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you're into that, I found out in researching this. There was a Buchigiri <clears throat> anime in the 90s. Really? Which had a similar premise, not exactly the same. So I'm not sure if this is a reboot remake of that. Huh. Um, I didn't wasn't able to go, like, go back and actually read it. But yeah, Buchigiri apparently a thing. Um uh main oh, character is kind of a wimp, um, goes to a school, the I forget the, the 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 premise, but the you know worn down school run by gangs, the right pr premise. Yeah. Um, so graffiti everywhere and people punching each other in the hallways, and uh, he gets wrapped up in all of that and then summons a genie. Yeah, somehow. So, yeah. So oh no! Oh, I I know how he does. He gets himself shot in the head. Um, That's right. She's gotta watch it, folks. Just gotta yeah. watch it. Um, I, I will say, like, if you're gonna watch a shonen anime, like, this is that it is very yes. entertaining. That uh, Ma Studio Mappa, very high budget, like, oh, it's great to watch. It actually reminded me of watching yeah. um, the first episode of, of um, My Hero Academia, right? Yeah, just yeah. high budget, like, really executing on premises, so really fun. Um, yeah, it's 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 a it's very shonen, anime. <laughs> it's a shonen, 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 shonen. Uh -huh. shonen. Um, Anime. Everyone is a pretty boy, I should point out, too. Yes. So be ready for that. <laughs> uh, then there's Chain Soldier. Oh, God. Um, uh, I, I'm going to say something. Um, this is a, 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 a kind of a horny season. <laughs> uh, 
the safe word is fetish. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's really it's, weird. Um, we're, we're gonna try to be as sort of circumspect as possible. Oh, but... it's so hard. No, oh my god, that was worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, this is set in a world where um, portals have opened up to a monster realm. Um, only women can fight them back. And so they kind of jump into the, these demon portals and fight them back. But they can um, chain... They, they can um, make agreements with men to be their <laughs> vessels, if you will, uh, by, by chaining them. Consensually. Consensual. Oh, completely consensual. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and, and the men kind of, you know, come along with them and, and, you know, the, the, uh, the look, women look, there's, use there's, their bodies, oh. right. Um, but mm. when they do that, after they do that, then they, they reward them with something that, that gives them pleasure. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to give you an idea, the, the. There's boot licking in the, the yeah. opening credits. So, uh -huh. you know, and there's there's all that going on. And mm -hmm. by this point in the day, we're just like, have we come across one that has not had anything like this? <laughs> we, we had a handful no. today with this, like, but but you know, it's and and the other point of this is is that actually in the anime, because the women are able to gain mm -hmm. the the power from eating the peaches, yeah. Um they you know they actually take a more it's the, the roles are reversed so there's, yeah. a, there's a role reversal so women are more in charge and dominant yeah and things like that it's a matriarchal society at this point it, it, on it, earth yeah yeah on yeah. earth um and like i point out at least it's you know we're getting a gender reversed version of this trope <laughs> right true yeah. you know true yes um I, it would be boy oh man um but yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun. I, I will say it is. It knows exactly what it's doing. Oh yeah, it does. Um, and so th there's a certain um, there's charming energy to it. Where they're like, we're just we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna go go for it. We're gonna have fun with it. It's gonna be exactly what it looks like. Um, and like it's gonna ride that edge, right? Of just being, uh, and it's just gonna you know be be right there. Where it's probably not gonna go too over the top but yeah just enough just enough to uh you know titillate the, the senses yeah. so to speak. exactly exactly uh and, all right let us and, move on oh to oh, yeah. ch cherry magic uh so this is an interesting one actually uh main character is the black haired guy there who yes. gains the ability to read minds and discovers that his older uh, office mate, the guy on the far left there, uh, has feelings for him. Um, interestingly, neither of them are gay at the outset of the, of, of the show. Uh, but they both, but like he has feelings, you know, there are clearly feelings there. He just doesn't know what to do with them, doesn't know how to, how, how to react. Um, and so it's both of them just kind of navigating that experience and trying to figure out how to, you know what to say what to do um and they both clearly like each other a lot this apparently was a very very popular story before it was adapted into anime it took a little while for it to get to anime so it's a fairly sensitive portrayal of just two people like discovering that there's a spark there and kind of exploring that as, as it goes on so it's it's very mature yeah i would say yes all things are around there's definitely a lot of bouncing back because neither of them are because it doesn't appeal to each one's like initial tastes, right? They're like, right. why do I, why do I feel this for this guy? Um, there's that going on there, so it's not like the, the typical sort of um, mature romance right. kind of path. But well, it's just yeah. kind of interesting because like the and also the premise of him being able to read minds is really just a very much a secondary type of thing. It's just a way to to move the plot. It's forward. true. Yeah. And so, you know, and also the guy, uh, the, the dark hair guy actually has to touch a person True. in order to hear their thoughts. And so, you know, he's just kind of fed up with it a little bit. <laughs> There's a scene on him on the subway. He just keeps bumping into people. And he's just like, I don't want to hear this stuff. This is gross. And so then when they're on the elevator and he hears a voice saying, 
talking about his own bedhead. And he's just like, huh, I wonder who he's talking about, who he's thinking about. And then it just moves on from there. And mm-hmm. it just, and it is a sensitive way to do it. It's, it's, it's a, it is a mature way. And it, like when we we're all watching this, we're all just like, oh. And when we got to the end of the episode, we're like, no, <laughs> come on, no. So, yeah, it, it, it well done, actually. Well done. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well done. Uh, the other question, Kevin, is it skin to skin or can you, can you do it through clothing? He can do it through clothing. As a matter of fact, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, he does it at one point where uh, his friend gets him a coffee and puts it to the back of his head and he's able to read thoughts. Right. So, right, right. so there, yeah. there, there you go. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's very secondary. They don't make a whole lot of, there's no listing of rules and no, I'm a level 10 telepath. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, none, of that, none of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that will be an uh, interesting issue in later yeah. uh, episodes. So. Um, all right, so that was Cherry Magic. Uh, let's move on to Delicious in Dungeon. Oh, yes. I'm so glad yeah. I finally got to see this. Yeah, so this is a uh, Netflix anime. I mean, who hasn't seen Delicious in Dungeon yet? I, I think this is one of the ones that everyone's been talking <laughs> right. about. Yeah. Um, if you have not, I will say it's a bit of a slow burn. Uh, so the first episode is really very much, what's the premise? What's the setup? Who are the characters? Uh, you can, it's not going to be mind-blowing in terms of <clears throat> right. what's going on there but it is very much here are these characters in this dungeon here's here's what they're trying to do here are their personalities roughly and uh yeah it's it's uh it's exactly that i'm up to volume like seven or eight or nine or, or so in in manga form and i think this is a really effective adaptation it's by studio trigger their new big thing i will say also it does not feel like a studio trigger anime. No, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that no, they're no, no, not. No. It's just different. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're going for a much more kind of traditional anime approach to this. Yeah, if you if you saw uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, it's not it's that <laughs> it, it's not that at all. Um, I enjoyed this for, uh, and 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 take this anime for what it is, and and it's just if you do that then you're going to enjoy it and if you're a foodie you're going to enjoy it mm-hmm. uh when the dwarf character comes in you're just like oh wow okay he's like a compendium of like <laughs> this is how you eat a slime this is how you mm-hmm. eat a poison scorpion this is how you eat a flesh-eating plant you know things like that mm-hmm. and it's kind of funny because they actually ask questions like the 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 woman mage in in the right hand side and in the back she's worried about like eating something that's eaten a person, right? Yeah. Because, you know, she goes, well, would that make me a kill? And she's very resistant to a lot of things going mm-hmm. on in there. Yeah. And I have to tell you, some of the dishes, the way that, this is Studio Trigger, though. Some of the dishes they make, and they show you the picture of it, you're just like, uh, I would eat that. Yes, <laughs> it actually looks good. Okay. Um, And Ketamana makes a good point in the chat that the first episode does cover different ground than the first chapters of the manga. So you are getting a, it's an adaptation. They're restructuring things a bit to make it work better in the anime medium. So just be aware of that. So, yeah. Hey, Dungeon Mashi. Yes. Moving on to Delusional Monthly Magazine. Uh, we we got right? through the episode. We did. Oh, did uh, we? This, okay. I, I think we did. Did we? <laughs> no, this is when the stroke happened, didn't it? Yeah. No, yeah. you may be right. I, I think we, we did skip. Oh, you know what? We, we fast forward through it. To, to, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. You're yeah, right. Yeah. We did. yeah, yeah. So, not a bad anime, just to be yeah. clear. It's just very much all over the place, especially in the first episode. Uh, it's set at a sort of a National Enquirer, Weekly World News style, um, you know, supernatural magazine kind of a, a thing. They publish all sorts of weird stuff. And a wacky character show up, and wackiness ensues as uh, as things happen. This is a I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, I put I put comedy down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that there's a lot of comedic elements to this. Yeah, many different I mean, flavors. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, part of this is also a sort of battle royale anime that we didn't get to at the end of the, by the end of it. But basically, yeah. it's it's some of these characters can transform into something, mm-hmm. and they actually kind of transform into 
vicious plushy looking characters. Yeah. So it's like this this the, the dude down at the bottom of, of the picture there, mm-hmm. he can turn into this uh tiger, half man, half tiger, you know, anthropomorphic thing, but he looks cute. Like it's like you know, fuzzy, cute, furry kind of thing going on. Not, You're welcome, furries. Yes. And oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's that, that's kind of it. And then everyone else has sort or certain various powers or whatever. And, yeah. it, and like they make a big deal in one scene about healing some dude's corns. Yeah. 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 Definitely a kind of supernatural action element to it, to your point. Yeah. So it's one of those shows where it's like, I think it's actually better going into it knowing that it's wacky and actiony and a lot of different things going on at once. That's okay. Like, be ready for something that's weird. I think when you do that, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna appeal It'll to you more than if you go yeah. and do it yeah, 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 blind. Yeah. So absolutely. That's the thing. Um again, one of those anime where if somebody had it on, I'd happily watch it. Yes. But you know, not something I'm going to I'm gonna necessarily leap into. <sighs> Similar with the Demon yep. Prince of Emoji House. So this is a reverse harem, um, yep. teenage girl orphan. Uh, inherits a house, uh, her parents' house goes and finds that it is uh, inhabited by a group of supernatural pretty boys. So, yeah, that, that, that's, um, that's it. That's, that's kind of it. Um, um, yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of the anime that this completely wholly uh, reminded me of, and it's really annoying me. Because it's a famous shoujo anime, and folks are going to scream at me in the chat room, but it's just not loading into my mind here. And uh, if you think about it, yes, it's that. <laughs> um, so yes, it's it's just kind of you know, girl, plucky girl living with uh, the, the, the well wacky folks around uh, in in this house, uh, and all of these supernatural hijinks they get into. So. Yeah. That stuff. Um, I'm going to see if I can remember. Actually, you know what it was? Fruit baskets. That's what we were thinking. Fruit basket. That's it. Thank yeah, you. Fruit, yeah, fruit yeah. baskets. Yeah. It's fruit basket. It's yeah. That. Um, all right. Moving on to Dr. Elise. Um, another one that we skipped partway through. Um, nothing against it. Just very much a kind of a classic thing. Um, girl reincarnates after being a bad person and decides to be a good person. In this case, a doctor. Um, and so she is pursuing that in her new life. I believe in the fantasy world, she was that. Now she's in the modern world as a doctor. Right. Yeah. Uh, so interesting premise. Uh, unfortunately, first episode is very much set up. Yeah. So just be prepared for a lot of, okay, we're establishing who our characters are and such. Um, so not particularly exciting first episode, but I think if you're into this kind of, you know, um, Cute female protagonist, but very much driving forward her own story, kind of a story. Very much that. Yeah. Um, so, again, nothing against it, but uh, one of those things. Okay. <sighs> um, getting back to our, you know, this is kind of a uh, an etchy season. This one kind of threw me because it keeps changing direction all through the anime. And I'm going to give this full credit. Like the first half of this anime feels like one of the better romantic anime I've seen uh, in terms of how they structure it. Like it starts with all of these, with just um, seeing the feet, different people moving and you're hearing voices. This is really interesting sort of driver into the show. Um, You meet the main character, he meets this girl uh, and then they, Make a left uh, turn. Uh, <laughs> uh, As you find out that uh, he is actually a demon brought to Earth, and she is actually an angel uh, who's also kind of sadistic. And when he tries to like make a move on her, she decides to chain him up um, and then very much enjoys having him chained up, shall we say. And and there's a a a... a cringy long sequence of putting a collar on yeah oh oh 
and and all that Matt implies Fringe. and all yeah. in that on all that that, that implies and mm-hmm. so many double entendres in a 30 second segment it's not yeah. even funny and just you know just kind of the the um the reluctance missive let's put it that way and mm-hmm. you know kind of thing going on and it's just like yeah. At the end of it, you're just like, oh, I, I don't know how to feel about this. I, okay. I don't know. It's yeah. Fine. And in fairness, this might be one of those shows where it's actually, if you're kind of intrigued by it, if you're curious, I suspect episodes two or three will probably establish the tone right. better. <clears throat> right. I think episode one, they're really trying hard to pull you in and make you keep you guessing and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they, it might bounce around a little bit more, but it's just kind of, it, it's unfortunately by trying to surprise you, it, it almost of, feels like a bait and switch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, it that didn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of felt, what was the anime from a couple of seasons ago where, um, the, the two characters, like it is literally how like attracted they are to each other, which is their like power, their, their magical power, which they use to fight the bad guy. Um, oh, it's like, like they end up to, like they're both naked looking at each other and they're both like you know really hot and and like they're 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 glowing massively with their power. Um that show at least had that as a premise all the way through so like you, yeah you know it surprises you with kind of that 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 premise but it's kind of this felt much more odd i guess yeah yeah oh yeah um character dies reincarnates gets asked what they want and they just want to be surrounded by fluffy things that's what they get so basically, so the woman who dies a pathetic um, mm-hmm. death in her apartment, she just drops dead, literally, yeah. you know, office work. Overwork, yep. Overwork, and she goes, I never even got to pet the kitty at my parents' place. So, of course, you know, Sama, God Sama, mm-hmm. goes, I can give you, I'm going to have to put you in another world and you have a finite lifespan, but you can have one tremendous autumn, but you know, just huge overpower thing. That you, what power do you want? I want to be able to attract all the fluffy things and pet them, literally. Mm-hmm. Yep, and that's it. And that's the anime. Yep, that's it. Uh, I will say it's diabetes yeah. inducing cute. Yes, um, and and that's not a complaint. Like it is very much if you yeah. want a cute, relaxing. Yes. Very light anime. This is exactly what that is. And again, it knows it's that. It is providing exactly that. And so it's a lot of fun for that. Um, yeah. Do not expect anything um, beyond that in episode one. It's just giving you cute yeah. and fluffy. So, so Becca, yes, it is real kink forward. This season. <laughs> season. Season. Yeah. Fortunately, this one forward. is not because she's like yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't. We're not even done with the real kink stuff yet. Um, Speaking of, I didn't realize that was next. (laughs) Oh God! Oh, Uh, this one. (laughs) So this is a remake of Magical Project S. Pretty Sammy, Uh, not quite. (laughs) Um, But this is taking a concept that is. um, So, the main character is, in my opinion, very clearly based on one of the characters from. Pretty Sammy, which is a yes. Tenchi Moyo spinoff. And basically, she loves the, her, her city is being rented by magical girls. Like magical girls fight in the sky and they can all see them. So they're doing the thing. Uh, and then she, this this girl who is very timid is approached by Kube and offered a contract. And uh, but the contract is actually for her to be one of the villain team uh, fighting off. And so she gets the most, not the most, um, a very ridiculous outfit. There was an anime a couple, of, a couple of seasons ago where the Red Power Ranger falls in love yes. with the, the yeah, that outfit, right? Of, of that girl, like the, the classic sort of dominatrix style villain outfit is her outfit. Uh, you can see that kind of there in the center. Uh, and she's horrified by this, but goes along with it anyway, because it turns out she's into it. So it bears mentioning <clears throat> which version we, we got. Yeah. 
<laughs> there is a censored and an uncensored version. We did not get the censored version. No, we did not. We boy, boy, did we not. Um, so if if you if you get the uncensored version, not that I'm saying you should go out there, run out there, and do that, but you, you will get. Oh God. You will def so the magical girl transformation scenes. Mm -hmm. You know how it's Sailor Moon's; it's all just body shape and everything's very, very white. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Um. Also, uh, <sighs> if you've read the manga, anime is much worse. Yes. <laughs> anime is much more explicit and like you know etchy. Just to be clear. Yes. And so, yeah, so she's really wanting to be the, the, the magical girl. And when she's doing the contract, that's what she thinks happens. And then she does the transformation. She's like, uh, what the heck? <laughs> and then she's like, tries to nope out of it. And the little cute magical black, uh, black rabbit cabot thing, I don't know, like shows a, a <laughs> pulls out a cell phone and goes, yeah, I totally took pictures of that. And it's going to go on the internet. What do you think your parents are going to think if you don't do the thing? It's like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> and apparently she goes, how could you? And he goes, we're the bad guys. Duh. Yeah. Duh. yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. And then it just goes on. And then, you know, she is forced to fight them. And she actually wins, the, of course, the first half of the yeah. battle. And so she has in her clutches the the, the magical girls on top there. Um, oh God! Um, yeah. And <laughs> and and then the the I little, don't think they're the ones on top. No. Um, and and the, the the little the little evil cabot thing goes. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? She's like, What do you mean? <laughs> you, you know what to do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do. Here, you know how they have wads. Here's your magical crop. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's another about two minutes of that yeah, kind of thing that. going on. Mm -hmm. Then we had tentacled, we had tickling, we had. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's episode one. Put that on Toonami. <laughs> 9 p.m. slot. Now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's uh, it, it's that. And again, in fairness, this oh, show wow. knows exactly what it is. It's giving you that. It is. There, there's no question of what you're getting in the show. Uh, so yeah, just just be aware of that. Also, I, I should point out, like, um, characters are standard magical girl age ranges. Yeah. So just be aware of that too. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, it is on high dive. I have not yet checked. Which version High Dive has? I think High Dive has. I don't know. I do not know. Um, it is. It is I, I, can, I, I can't just see that. Like, I'll be on High Dive tonight and I'll be like, okay, which version do they have? And the pretty girl who gives me food will come and go, what are you watching? <laughs> nothing. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah probably the second version. Anyway, and by the way, just to be clear as we're talking about, I just downloaded whatever copy I could find. I did not realize yeah. it was uncensored. Honestly, <clears throat> I was just I his his mm. shock was every bit as genuine as mine. <laughs> but we we're just like oh oh oh, oh, mm. oh yeah. okay. Wow. Oops. I was just be aware of that. Uh all right, let's let's quite enough of that. <laughs> uh also slightly etchy. Uh Hokkaido girls are super adorable. Uh main character moves to Hokkaido and uh, interacts with in, in the first episode it's the blonde girl there and it's about him uh just really enjoying being around cute girls right uh yeah. and just being in this new environment and and just seeing how different they are for the people like it's like she wears that out in the snow uh because yeah. you know she's grown up in it and it's just kind of, uh, totally normal so it's i would say lighthearted kind of romantic yeah. comedy there's not a whole lot of special frills to this. <clears throat> you know, it's very formulaic. <clears throat> I think that when we watched it, we got about, I'd say about two-thirds of the way through before we were just like, yeah. okay, we, we get it. We, we, yeah. we understand what this is, and, and we wanted to move on to something else. Not bad by any stretch of the imagination, just, you know, you know what it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is It is just kind of that, yeah. which there's a lot of that. So ignore this image. 
uh, because it gives you no idea what episode one is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, most of these characters do not show up in episode one at all. Right. I mean, that you get a quick shot of them, but uh, this is one of the grim dark shows of the Ooh, season. Yeah. Um, almost a level of trigger warning. Like, like yeah. really, really nasty stuff happens in this episode. Uh, and basically, it's set in a world where um, there are a bunch of bad things happening, and only certain characters can stop them. So they're basically superheroes, um, but they're not necessarily nice superheroes. So right. um, it's folks going in and kind of doing that thing. And yeah, apparently Doctor Strange is a character. Yeah, uh, I, I, I was why. just looking at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, He's not in the first episode at all. No. I was like, looking at that, I was like, Huh? Yeah. Although, if you recall, I think this is the one where Ed and Al are in the opening credits. Yes, series. is it? I is think it? so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's the other one. That's the other one. With it was the, the other one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, With the dragon humping the bus. Yeah, that's right. That, that, that was that one. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so it, it's that. Yeah, it's 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 hard to say. So the the the, the one character you come across here is the boy in the center with the sort of tracksuit jacket on and he's he's not evil he just all he is there for is to kill the bad guys and so he's kind of ignoring yeah. he he does he's not there to save anybody he'll save people if he you know if it's convenient but that's just not what he's there for uh he's there to just beat up bad things so hard to say and again first episode is is actually the brown haired girl sort of center left Kind of her origin story, which is not fun. No, it starts off, and and they did a good job in starting it off mm. cutesy, and you're just like, oh, Hogwarts for, you mm. know, borderline Yuri, and yeah, you know, and literally borderline Yuri, yeah, and, oh yeah, and and, and um, then the thing happens, which 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 was a little confusing to me because like I know mm. they tried they tried to set the premise, but they didn't. No, that that was that was the that was the hard part of this is that the bad yeah. thing happens and you're just like why, yeah, and and, and, and why and you yeah. don't get an answer, satisfactory answer. No, and the 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 budding Yuri romance. I don't think this is a, a spoiler. Um, ends tra tragically. And very, <laughs> there's a lot of screaming and blood involved. Uh huh. Yeah. And, exactly. And, and as the line in the uh, Doom song goes. Rip and tear until you are done. Yeah, no, leave it uh, exactly. It was. It was. It's a thing. So clearly, episode one is is there to kind of shock you and intrigue yeah. you into what's going on. So if you watch it, like go into it with that expectation that it's yes. it's a teaser fine. more than anything yeah. else. Uh, which, which is fine. It's just kind of the the, 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 the approach is taken. Um. <laughs> Oh, so, this thing. Yes. Yeah. I don't I don't okay. Yeah. Also, ignore this this poster. It doesn't look anything as good as this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um and yeah, it's kind of on a uh Goblin Slayer. Yes. That that, that 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 that's that. Um so Legend of Supernova Prefecture Chiba is one of these tourism anime, right? So we're right. gonna talk to you about this particular prefecture, so you'll hopefully come and um, and and go there. Um it's four minute episodes. Budget is almost non existent. It's a comedy. It's cute girls showing you know showing up together to interact and you know have fun together. Um, so here's the problem with watching just episode one. You're not supposed to watch just one episode of a tourism anime. Uh, this is something to catch bits of to laugh at. Right. It's not meant to like pull you in or anything. So first episode is just it's there. There's there's a, a laugh or two. Um, but it's very much something they threw together to, yes. you know, cause a laugh and make you watch it occasionally. Ha ha! The 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 meteor came down and destroyed all six of our schools. Ha ha! ha. By the way, in this prefecture, these are this town and this town and these that they do this industry and that industry. And oh, really? And you know, kind of, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. So it's a thing. It's a th <laughs> it exists. Oh, this. Oh, but yeah. this. Oh, this. Uh, mm. So this is our historical drama anime oh, of the season. Yeah. Uh, Meiji Gekken. It is set um, a few years into the Meiji era. So Japan is opening up to the West. And it is very much that. It is. Oh, if yeah. you like Rodi Kenshin, you're welcome. Yes. 
Um, if you don't like Rodney Kenshin, if you like historical, you're welcome. Welcome. Uh, yeah. And when we say historical, it is not just set in the Meiji period. Like, right. multiple historical characters and events exist and occur in this episode that are very much set to actual history. Yeah. Um, so it's very interesting. But then I should also point out, like, there are some very shonen action-y things that happen. So yes. it's clearly villains are going <clears throat> to be, you know, folks who can leap 30 feet into the air and, you know, breathe fire and... All that kind of showed any goodness. But it was good. That was a good first episode, though. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. it was it was really, really good. Um, <clears throat> so the premise is that the um our main hero was a samurai in the Boshan War on the losing side. Mm -hmm. And he becomes the rickshaw guy and he he promises someone to look out after their younger sister, but he has to find the younger sister he hasn't been able mm -hmm. to yet. Mm -hmm. A thing happens, a historical event happens. I don't want to spoil it. And he's caught up in the middle of it and in the process of, of finding the, the younger sister of, of his friend. He's also having to deal with this. And then things happen as a result of that. And then they, then I suspect that the, that's the launching point for the rest of the series. Yeah. And and it's and it's just very well done. Even the shonen -y parts to it were not too shown any you know wasn't, yeah. wasn't too fantastical um mm -hmm. some interesting stuff happened but you know but otherwise it was it was just really really well done i think one of the things kenshin did really <clears throat> well is that they presented shonen villains as puzzles to solve yes right like how do you fight and defeat somebody that can do this and so you can be fantastical with that because it's just a thing to to deal with, and then we move on with the story. And right. That seems to be the, 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 what they're taking here. And the cool thing here is um, what really impressed me is just how many plot threads are yeah. introduced in this episode. Yeah, and that are very clearly in your head by the end. So yeah. you get lots of different things going on. By the end, you're like, okay, like I, I understand all this. I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going. So a deft hand working on right. the show. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, I hear you on that, Rocco. We'll get back to that later. Uh, let's move to Metallic Rouge. Man. Um, yeah. This is an interesting one. Um, I was totally into this anime until the last third of the episode. It's a cyberpunk style action adventure series, very seinen, uh, yeah. dealing with androids and their, their position in society at, um, where androids are, they have to take this injection every day to stay alive. And that is one of the ways in which they are controlled and discriminated against. They are otherwise indistinguishable from humans. And that is very much a thing in their society. So it's dealing with prejudice and all that kind of stuff. So Detroit become human and all those sorts of things. Um, and then, and I, again, I'm, I, the reason I was slightly turned off by this anime is two thirds of the way through, the characters turn into Power Rangers. Um, yeah. They, they you know, transform and have this sort of very Ultraman Power Ranger style fight. That's okay. That can work. It was just such a pivot yeah <laughs> from the sort of blade runner style of the first two thirds that it just really threw me now that i've had some time to think about it and process it i'm more into it more willing to go back and watch the show uh just be aware that that that's coming and that is a feature of the show the yeah. animation and the action are fabulous they are yeah. extremely high budget uh and the the the, the everything out there's just that Oh, and you can see from the top of the poster, it's kind of that style. Uh, it's kind of a very odd element based on what we're used to outside of Japan. Yeah, it was a... Um, like you, I, I enjoyed it up until that point at, at the, the Battle Royale at the end. I was just kind of like, yeah, okay, okay. But it definitely was, you know, if, if you like the Blade Runner-esque Mm -hmm. storyline of androids and and that that kind of thing you know there's no roy batty speech sorry no but um <laughs> but uh it's it's in that direction and then it just yeah. kind of goes 
over here for a little while. Mm -hmm. We're just like, eh. and I should say when when I say Power Rangers, that's probably <clears throat> unfair. It's a, it's a little, yeah, but yeah, um, Guyver, yeah, Ultraman. I think it's probably well, anyway. Yeah, just definitely a shift. Also, a shift. Mister Villain's day off. Oh yeah. Speaking of Power it's Rangers, a fun little one. <laughs> So the main character, the guy in the center there, uh, is the villain of an evil organization that is being um, defended by Power Rangers, basically. There's a Sentai team that's, that's, that's fighting his evil organization. Uh, but every so often he gets a day off. And so the show is set entirely during his days off when he is just trying to relax and go to the zoo and just enjoy himself and not get caught up in all the drama but of course what happens the power rangers show up to try to stop him and he's like look i'm just on my day off so it is this extraordinarily chill right <coughs> sort of yeah. uh approach that he has both these screwball comedy moments of being interrupted and trying to deal with all that kind of stuff and he has a fixation on pandas that he's just like he just loves pandas and yeah. you know, that, that, that thing. And so he's at the zoo when the Rangers comes out, he's just like, we're going to fight. He's just like, no, 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 for the love of no, please stop. <laughs> yeah. Just stop. Just stop, <laughs> please. And he figures out that the Ranger is lost and gives the mm -hmm. Rangers, he goes, well, why don't we just have a little truce here? Mm -hmm. I, I really just want to see the pandas. I'm not, I'm not out to kill yeah. humanity today. I just want to see the pandas. Exactly. Um, Totally. Um, it's it occupies that that middle ground between a completely relaxing anime and a comedy anime. Yeah, where you can't just watch it and kind of completely turn your brain off because it is throwing jokes at you. But that is kind of part of the fun experience of it. Where it's suddenly something comes along, you're like, "Oh, that's funny." Yeah. All right. Uh, let us move on to. My instant death ability is so overpowered, no one in this other world stands a chance against me, or my instant death ability is so overpowered. Another show that where the first episode <sighs> is kind of all over the place and trying to draw you in and trying to kind of shock you, grimdark you. Um, yeah, boy, uh, I have thoughts. Yeah. I have feelings. <laughs> we were surprised about the dragon humping the bus. Yeah, we were. Um, a bus also, that had totally isekai by the way, with yes. everybody in it. So here's where the show lost me. And again, I can see people where this does not lost, lose them either, but that's fine. The, the, the entire bus gets isekai into this, this world. The main character is sleeping in the back of the bus, um, wakes up and finds out that uh, some members of the group in the bus now have magical powers. They have magical powers have awakened. They all know what those magical powers are. They all immediately turn amoral and evil. And yeah. turn on everyone. Like, like literally everybody other than like two or three other characters in there just flip a switch and uh, uh, yeah, are so this all jerks. Yeah, so it starts off with a very elfin lead kind of thing going on, and then it jumps again. This is one of the things where it's just all over the place. Then it suddenly jumps to again the the protagonist being asleep in the back, and he's asleep through like the whole almost yeah. the whole thing. And the bus isekais. We don't know why everyone dies on the bus, but they isekai, and they show, up, and they're in the middle of a meadow, and this goddess comes up, literal goddess comes in and says. So, um, and she starts talking, and then one of the bus drivers says something, and she explodes his head, scatters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she makes a joke, nobody laughs, so she scanners the other adult on the bus. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the people, kids are just like, oh, God, what's going on? Yeah. And then she does this thing, and everyone but four kids glow, and those who glow get powers. Mm -hmm. The ones who don't glow for some whatever reasons unknown to anybody don't have powers. Dude sleeping is one of them. The pigtail big tail girl is one of them, and a couple other people. And the, as Brett says, they make the decision of going. Well, there's one dragon in the area. We have to level up because the guys tells them that they have to. So um, 
we need decoys. So you guys, and they trap them on the bus to be eaten mm-hmm. and destroyed by the dragon. And just like a literal decision. And like all the rest, all like 40 of them are just like, yeah, see ya, bye. Yeah. Um, Done. And then three oh, of them come worse. back. Yeah, oh, and then three God, of them come back yeah. and they're all jerks. And it's just like, mm. uh, And then, you know, they, they kill off other characters just kind of very offhandedly. And like, like it happens. And then like the main character shows up and, oh, okay, they're dead. It just like no conception of what's going on, like you know this massive right. death. Even the Isakai is just like normal to him, which is very weird. Yeah. Uh, but of course, he also has an instant death ability. So okay, um, but it just <clears throat> writing is not a strong point. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so we think yeah. you can skip this one. Yeah. First episode definitely is one that was a, a miss in terms of elements all coming together to, to work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, kind of a weird one. Yeah, absolutely hit him on it. It's a power fantasy. Like, yeah. it, it feels like a 14-year-old's power fantasy fanfic thing. Uh, but not Pan no Michi, oh. thankfully. Oh. This is uh, cute high school girls playing Mahjong. Yep. Would you say it was? Describe it. Cute high school girls playing uh, mahjong. No, no, no. 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 We use uh, laid back camp, but mahjong. Yeah, laid back camp with mahjong. That's that's, that's what okay. this is. It's exactly. What it is. <clears throat> uh, the one thing I will add is that partly through the episode, they start making what are clearly references to various manga and other shows, like visually, like the care their their styles change yeah. as they quote a line <gasps> i figured it out it's kaji it's uh um, yes 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 that's it that's exactly it. What that yeah, is. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So there are several kaji references in there and some of them i have no idea like i've never no clue what they're referencing so you may get lost a little bit with some of the, some of those jokes because they just throw them at, uh, at you um but it is just that it's lovely they all get along they're all friends um and so there's there's none of that that drama so far uh also surprisingly high budget Yes, like the characters are walking around and interacting and, and bouncing off. Like it is not what what I would expect from a cute girls doing cute things kind of anime. No, like there's a lot of budget behind it. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> with with the King Ford uh, season that we had. This was certainly a wonderful, wonderful palate cleanser. Um, mm-hmm. But but in all, it, but not just because of that reason. It, yeah. there, there's a story behind it. She you know gets the place because her dad is just like, oh, you need a place to be a kid. Because the mother kicked her out for being loud, and when I say kicked out, I don't mean like you know she's thrown onto the streets. Just you know, yeah. the mother's just had it, yeah. and um, you know she's like, Ugh! you know, yeah. And so they, but they have to clean this place up, and she has no mm-hmm. idea. None of the they have very basic knowledge of, of what mahjong is. There's a little fantastical element where this this little birdie guy comes up, but other than that, it's it's actually quite nice, fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it is what it is, and that's that's all it is, and it's just like yep. your camp. Exactly. Um, it is available. I'm double checking something here real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Um, um, they have a YouTube channel, um, and I'm just double checking something here real quick. Nope, not sure. I'm not sure where this is streaming. I do not know. Huh. Um, but anyway, it's a thing. Find it if you can. <laughs> All right. How wow. about with Lash? Cool. Oh, gee. <laughs> and not in so, a really bad way, but just. just... No, no. Yeah. Um, this is an hour long first episode, and we watched it all the way through. So the I, I'm trying to figure out how much to kind of reveal here. So I say starts, just take it up to the first half, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It starts off about uh, with a salaryman being a kind of bored salaryman. Doesn't have a terrible job. Like he 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 says it's fine. Like I I go to work, come home. You know I'm I paid enough. Uh, but then he decides to uh, get a pet. And pets are expensive, so he decides to adopt a bird, which then he brings home and begins to talk to him. 
And we, you think at first it's a pair of keys repeating something. Mm -hmm. Nope. 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 Um, it is an isekai mage. <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, that's right, who is incarnated as a sparrow and is now owned by this guy, but also like still has all of his isekai, all of his magical mage powers. Yeah. So the main character is like, can you teleport me to your fantasy world? Sure. Whoop. And they're in the fantasy world. So now suddenly that's a thing. And so he's <clears> like, okay, well, wait. There are things in my world that I could bring to the fantasy world that I could sell there and make money. Couldn't I? Yes. So suddenly it becomes Spice and Wolf. Yeah. Where he's selling, you know, stuff from the Konbini in the fantasy world for large amounts of money. And he's dealing with that. Um, and then, uh, thing interestingly, interestingly it's, it's mostly not food. It is, um, like pens and paper and things you can just kind of easily carry around. So it's stuff you can, you can sell that has like a, a clear long-term value, um, yeah. as opposed to food. But then he, uh, he can, like, he gets better accommodations in the fantasy world than he does in his small apartment. So he'll spend more time like sleeping there and doing stuff there than back in his, in his apartment. So he is on the older side of things. So yeah, he's middle like age. 30, yeah, middle age. He's 39 years old. Um, as he as he says, I'm looking down the barrel of 40. Yeah. And and he, you know, he get you know, his and he's a solid worker, and you know, he gets this 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 bird, and the bird has expensive taste. The bird wants to eat wagyu beef and, yeah. and stuff like that. And say, so, and the guy is just like, I don't have the money for that. Oh, money is a problem. Yes. Well, let's fix that. And that's how that all starts <laughs> up. And you know, he does the thing. Mm -hmm. And the episode up to the, up until about halfway through is literally just him doing the thing to get the more money for both of them to mm -hmm. figure out what he's going to do with his life from here on out because things yeah. are starting to look up. He's feeling good about himself. He's he's that the weird thing is that there's a weird positivity that comes throughout in, in yeah. this half. And like he's just like like and other characters are like noticing that are just like well, wow you look really great you look you know like mm -hmm. you're something happened that made you like mm, you know and mm -hmm. he's feeling good about things because he's because yeah. the part of it is is that he's working he's working really hard but he's liking what he's doing I think yeah you know, when he's going to the other world right you know he likes mm -hmm. what he's doing he's yeah. he's playing things out like a big part of the episode is how is he going to get in in with the nobility and all that. Yeah. in the fantasy world and so then and then the halfway mark happens and you're just like oh my god what the <laughs> hell hit me in the neck <laughs> and we can't tell you more because it just yeah it, it's yeah. such you i'm sorry folks you're gonna have to experience the pain as yeah. well but it's also, still good it's still good again hour long episode we have only met the three characters in the bottom of that poster right you don't know who the rest of those characters are yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this show kind of goes places. It's weird. Um, so answering some questions from the chat, he does not quit his job because right. his um, the income from the fantasy world isn't stable yet. He's still like going there and saying, "Okay, I can, I can, I can give you this now, or you know, sell you this now. I'll come back later with more." And so he's still kind of establishing himself in the fantasy world. So he's like not quite comfortable quitting the, the day job. Like I said, like the day job is um, fairly normal Japanese style hours. So it's probably ten hours a day, but it's not crazy. Um, how does he explain all the all the gold he's selling? Um, so I believe I I, um, I forget how they they do mention that. I forget exactly yes, what it is. I forget I forget how it is. Yeah, he's not. It's not like the the one anime where the girl just brings the gold back and she sells it on the exchange. He yeah. does a trade of sorts. Mm -hmm. Where he's able to bring an item back, I think, and able to sell the item or, well, or whatever, something like that. And, Some and kind think, of trade. Yeah. Well, he also makes the point that um, if he wants to sell the gold, he's not going to make as much money for it because it's not like he's not selling known gold coins. It's just lumps of gold, basically. Right. Yeah. You can bring those back and sell them and say, well, there's some gold from somewhere. Um, so he's, instead of actually getting, you know, it would be a, a million yen, he's actually getting like 700,000 yen equivalent. Yeah. Um, so they do kind of address some of that stuff, but yeah, it's interesting. I will say, like, the budget on this is not massively high, but it's sort of mid range. It's probably yeah. fine. It, it it it's effective, and just man, 
it's interesting. Yeah. Love an anime that's just kind of interesting like that. Right. Just, just, just get in, get a neck brace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I, I can't imagine what it's gonna be by episode five. Um moving on to another one of the big shonen anime of the season. Yep. Sengoku Yoko is um set in the Sengoku period, so Samurai period. The main character is actually the the boy in the green on the bottom, and he comes across these um fantastical characters, uh, and then they fight things. <laughs> Basically, yeah, I mean it is kind of that. Um, kind, of, kind of hunter hunter more adult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Historical with furries. Well, yes, put, yeah. Know. And it is high budget. There's a lot of, of movement, a lot of lot of action. Yeah. You really do some good stuff there. Um don't be fooled into thinking that it is Inuyasha. No. It's <laughs> Brock has not. pointed that out that it looks it they're absolutely yeah. making it look like Inuyasha. And unfortunately, it, it's not. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you you are right to be fooled. <laughs> Unfortunately, you, you're right to... I mean, you take that look at it. You're, it's almost like a reimagining, but it, yeah, it is. Yeah, a, unfortunately. It is. Um, but yes, it is uh, It is a, a fun show in anime thus far. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was that anime... From a couple of years ago, with the two schoolgirls in the very chunky style. Um, oh, pop! Um, 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 yeah, pop um, something. Um, mm, mm, I'm, yeah, I know. I'm I can't, I, I, yeah, um, no, no, it's the stroke. It's it's from watching everything. Um, <laughs> so. This is a screwball comedy, weird character design. Pop Team Epic, thank you, chat. Yeah, yes. Um, very much in that vein, not as um, experimental as Pop Team Epic yeah. in terms of visuals and so forth. But this is one of those, everything's funny because it's funny, so you should laugh. Kind of a show. It's funny. It's cringy and it's funny. That's why you should laugh because it's cringy and, and everything's in, odd and, and, and sad and and it's in a sad little bar in a sad little town in a sad little street in a sad little alley and a sad little people. And that's it, it, Oh, God, yeah. it's just sad. <laughs> but yeah. it's supposed to be funny. Yeah. Um, if you like this and laugh at it, I totally get it. Yeah. It's going to be on or off. You're either going yeah. to love this or it's going to not work for you it. at all. Yeah, Just be aware. Um, that's it's a thing. It's go for it. It exists. It exists. Uh, solo leveling. Oh, I will admit, I can't remember this anime at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see if I can pull up anything from this because, as I recall, the description doesn't really. Uh, okay, yeah. So the main character is okay. I'm remembering some elements from it. Uh, you got your your party of adventurers who go in. Main character has been adventuring for a long time, and he's still oh, low ranked. Yeah, okay. He just yeah, 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 yeah. can't seem to get higher, and it's getting to be harder and harder and harder for him to like. People <laughs> like him; they enjoy having him on the team because he's a nice guy, but he doesn't really do anything. Um, there's a girl he likes. I would say it's more seinen than shonen. Yeah. Um, so he he goes on this. There's a girl in the party who's the healer who clearly likes him a lot. And so they uh, they're going through there. He totally understands what his situation is. He's very clear minded. He has a sick little sister, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's what he's, he's doing it for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then. Again, I got no real spoiler. End of the episode, they all get the, the whole big adventure party gets trapped in a um, in a death trap room, and they're gonna have to deal with that. And that's where the episode ends. So, yeah. unfortunately, it's one of those things where I think once you get a few more episodes in, you get a better sense of what where the show is actually going. First episode is very much just again kind of trying to reel you in to yeah. the characters and so forth. So, so only certain people in the world have the ability to to go yeah. into this other world to 
stop the beast from coming to earth mm -hmm. and he is about as low of a level as you can get and there's no and this isn't one of those where he has a special talent that suddenly you know that he's aware of but it's only at level one but he's really good he's just not good at this yeah but mm -hmm. but because he can do it it's a job that pays the money that enables him to do the thing yep. and he yep. and like he's even considering like maybe i can do this a few more times and that's it like, yeah. like he's very realistic about where he is on, on the food chain, literal food mm -hmm. chain on this. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, and obviously, a thing is going to happen, which allows yeah. him to level up and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, presumably, he now has to level up alone, without other people. Solo, you might say. <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. Exactly. Imagine that. It's in the title. I didn't, I didn't think. <laughs> wow. Crazy. Crazy. So that's been out for a while. Um, uh, high budget. Definitely enjoyable. As it's a medium high budget. Uh, definitely enjoyable. Definitely a lot of thought put into it. Definitely a little yeah. more grown up uh, yeah. approach. Strongest Tanks Labyrinth. Uh, another fantasy anime. Um, another one kind of similar to solo leveling in that the main character is a tank. So he sort of draws aggro and sort of draws the attention of the, the, the bad guy and shields everyone else. But he's been faltering recently, um, not doing as well. And so he gets dumped by his party. Um, and with the... the uh, got a little annoyed by the, um, you know, absolute jerk face guy yeah. who... I mean, where it's like, okay, dude, we we, you know, we, we get it. Yeah. Ratchet it down a little bit. But, uh, and then of course you find out it's not actually that going on, that there's more going on with his, his power. But he's a really decent dude. You know, he's trying to do the right thing. He's a very, he's, he's a little bit older. He's just trying to do the right thing. So you really appreciate him, I think. You, you, I, yeah. I found myself, you know, liking him a lot. And um, um, he ends up rescuing this little girl who is – there's some bad stuff going on in the world. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. Um, and so he's kind of trying to protect her from that. And so it's him navigating and figuring out what's going on. Very fantasy, very much, you know, how am I going to navigate my weird power kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but, like you get to like him because he understands what he's doing – totally and what his role is and mm -hmm. he and and there's no lack of trying it <clears throat> with this guy like he's <clears throat> when he does the thing it, he's he's doing it and yeah. you get a sense of i'm experienced from this guy mm -hmm. and that and that's yeah. what you get like when there's a moment later on where he helps another group of people yeah um you know it's just because it happens they happen to be going his way and he you know through literally just through his experience experience is able to get them guide them through the event um and to the point where you know again he has a sick little sister that he's trying to you know mm -hmm. raise money for and all, and all that stuff but he's like like when he gets when the guy who's over the top and he's just a, being a jerk mm -hmm. he does the grown-up thing he's just takes a deep breath it's okay it's fine it's okay mm -hmm. i'm out yep yeah mm -hmm. yeah there, there's no you know drama or anything he's just like okay let's, yeah. let's he, move on he definitely takes the high road yeah, in a lot of situations, which is very appreciated. Yeah, a lot of sick little sisters this season for some reason. Yeah, um, yeah he's very into his little sister. I was, it, it, I was worried they're going to go in a, oh, in a direction, they're, they're, yeah, but they yeah. pull back thankfully. Oh, and by the way, there's a character design in there is definitely from the old, um, older anime um, Rosario the Vampire. I think oh yeah, the, the the blue hair girl in mm -hmm. in that one. There's almost a doppelganger anime character design of that mm -hmm. in, in yeah so yeah I like this one a lot surprisingly yeah also tales of wedding rings. Ring rings yeah so as you look at this poster you'll get a sense of what kind of show this is <laughs> uh it is it's not a harem it's not a harem no it's not a harem. no no it can't no. possibly be so what i like about this is the uh it's a portal fantasy but but it's it's some twists uh, basically, main character is human guy, and the girl portaled to the, to Earth, and has been living with him and growing up with him, and now she's going back. Basically, and I, it's not um, I won't I won't explain too too much about what's going on because I think it is kind of an interesting premise. But basically, uh, because she is a target in her fantasy world, 
she is being put on earth to be to stay safe until such time as she you know she has to go back um i will also say the, the kind of pointing out in chat yeah it doesn't really look like, 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 like the poster much the poster is very stylized it looks more like a modern yeah. anime yeah so um they've been growing up he is in love with the girl who is the, yeah. the blonde girl just over his right shoulder and he can't quite he hasn't quite found the right time to say it it's also clear she has feelings for him too but it's just it's not meant to be so she can't you know she can't yeah. go on, on that 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 side and then she gets portaled back he goes with her and then um ends up you know technically getting married to her kind of sort yeah, of sort in, of, the, in, in the, the anime way. way right in the anime way right oh yes so. that's a really good way to put it in the anime <laughs> way yes <laughs> and when you see you'll not understand exactly what yeah that exactly uh, there's a lot of it's anime moments it's anime, in this. yeah uh and so the cool thing is that brings with it various responsibilities which he then takes yes. on yes yeah so this we talked about tenchi before this is very much that Tenchi premise where the main character starts kind of not knowing what he's going to do with his life. But when the situation presents itself and he has to kind of man up, he does so and he becomes a more interesting character. Yeah. So he's a very active character in this. He's not the typical, um, you know, he's not watching or anything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's really nice. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Like Ranma. Um, yeah. Buried in the anime. Right? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so the, the thing is the, these wedding rings are owned by multiple girls. So of course he's going to have yes. to collect them all apparently. So there's that whole thing. Um, uh, so yeah, so funny. You should mention, uh, uh, Raka, um, background girl looks like Albedo. Good point. Um, there's also a sucrose in another uh, oh, anime yes. this, yeah. this, this season. Kind of, kind of strange, but, um, so nice take on all of this and a fair amount happens in the first episode so clearly this yeah. is not one of those we're just going to sit back and you know we'll have romantic comedy hijinks for five episodes we're really moving forward on, on the plot so if you like that kind of stuff um actually raka escaflone ronma crossover is an not excellent yeah, way of putting yeah 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 that's you're absolutely right that is that is what this feels like um but you kind of gender swapped on the the yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, <laughs> protagonist makes mature decisions. Imagine that. <laughs> so yeah, cool. I also appreciate that despite being a harem anime, we have not met any of the other girls. Right. It's just the blonde girls, so they're not trying to go too far too fast. Oh man, this is hilarious. It is time for torture princess. So okay. main character is... is the princess of this kingdom. Yeah. Um, and she's this awesome battle princess. My word, the budget on the action sequence at the beginning of this episode, yeah. where she's fighting the demons, is fabulous. Um, and then she gets captured, um, and they have to try to, by the demons, even put her in a prison cell in like a smock with a collar, and uh, they need to get um, get information out of her, and so they, they, they decide to torture her. And at that point, you need to forget this poster because the show turns into this. <laughs> it is hilarious. Because they, they torture her by bringing in delicious food and making her look at it and smell it and watch, like, the crust of the bread as you... And, and she's a total mouth. foodie. That's the other part of it. Like, <laughs> she's a... So they they know this. And, and, like, the sword is a sentient sword and actually talks out loud. Yeah. And so he's just trying to bolster the bread. Princess, don't do it. Don't give in. And she's just like, but the bread is so fluffy. It's so fluffy. Look at the butter. Yeah, it just... It just... And she crumbles every single time. Yeah. <laughs> and And... We don't know how long or what they're going to do with this anime, yeah. but the first episode was was quite enjoyable. Yeah. Um, very funny. Yeah, it's very funny, very adorable, very very cute. Um, and uh, oh man, just the I love it when a show has a very ridiculous premise and commits to it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, very, yeah, one episode definitely. Unwanted Undead Adventure. Simple premise here. Uh, and again, this is tough because 
similar to some of the other shows, there's clearly a lot more going on, but they're just kind of setting up the premise in the first episode. Um, main character is a low ranked guy, he's kind of wandering around doing stuff, stumbles on a the lair of a big monster and dies to the monster, and then much later or sometime later revives as a skeleton, as you do. And so he is now a skeleton, he's now undead, but he is conscious, he remembers everything. And so now he's going to try to find some path forward where he can uh, like live in regular society, right? Like he's, he's probably, you know, his ideal I'm sure would be to go, go back to completely normal, but obviously that's a long-term plan. Yeah. So it's like, what long-term. can I do next? How can I do, you know, <clears throat> can I upgrade as a, an undead to become, you know, less obviously undead? That's kind of the, 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 the idea. It's just kind of following him his path through. Um, definitely a early like episode one of uh, reincarnated as a slime, right? right? That whole premise where you're you're this low level monster. How do you get up? Very much that idea, but he is a skeleton instead. Um, clearly, we're going to get involved with all these characters, other characters. But you don't see any of them in the first episode, really. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. You see no, the, t- the the top two. You see, yeah, you, you, you <clears throat> see them all, and you, you you see the bottom right one briefly as she's in the yeah. the uh, Adventurers Guild. But it's it's introducing you to that premise. Well done. Yeah, like, I enjoyed it. It was interesting. Uh, also, very impressive. The much of the time, him as a skeleton is CGI. Yeah, and it works. Um, because he's it's a rigid body, and they managed to fit it into everything going on to where I was like, I know I'm watching CGI, but it doesn't it, it feels integrated into everything else going on. It's not distracting. Yeah, it it, it works. <clears throat> you can follow the action, you're not gonna be distracted by bad CGI, let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, and this is not gonna be, by the way, uh, like overlord or anything like that, yeah. where you have skeletons are just overpowered with the massive yeah, 30 plus plus 30 broadsword <laughs> kills everything in his past. Now, literally, he's just a low level guy, he just got killed, and mm-hmm. he's able to work in work himself up. And um, it's kind of interesting. Um, it, you know, it's it's just it, it's kind of low stakes right now. Yeah, yeah, we're we're just kind of getting him to the point where he could. It kind of ends funnily enough, um, you know. He yeah, <laughs> trying to teach himself how to talk again. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but um, but yeah. So the you know, there are people, and people are missing him. That's the other part. Yeah, of it, true. Is, is that like they're like I expected him here. He hasn't been here in a couple mm-hmm. of days. You know, we were gonna pair this girl up that the the girl in the lower right up with him because he's been to that particular labyrinth many many times but we don't know where he is so we can kind of see where the rest of the where the next part of the story is going to be where you know how he's going to come across these people back again Mm -hmm. and get back into their lives somehow yeah exactly um yeah uh they do address that kind of mono that he 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 should be turned by the undead like like all of the stuff Yes, it would be a problem for the undead if he gets hit by radiant magic or radiant, you know, that kind of stuff. That would be a problem. All that stuff does seem to apply to him. Yeah, that is that is a concern. Uh, so yeah, interesting idea. Um, boy, I feel bad for this show. I, I seriously do. I know another villainous anime. Um, main character is the girl in the middle. Um, she is the villainous in the Otome game. And she, what she has decided to do is level up her skills as a kid and then just avoid all the other characters. So unlike, unlike a lot of the other villainous, char- villainous shows where they're trying to change things, diverse, she's just like, I'm going to you know, stay in the shadows and not do anything. The problem is um, the way they tried to sell this in the episode oh. is by animating the beginning of the Otome game. So we literally thought this was like really bad anime. Yeah. Like yeah. drawn anime. We yeah, it, really a, thought that at first. Yeah, it's all the cliches all getting thrown at you and not in a haha it's funny way. Just straight. Just yeah. this is the anime you're getting. So you think, "Oh, it's just another cliche. This is I, you know, uh blah." Um and then you know, halfway through, you 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 pull back, you know, on the visual and you see it on the screen of a TV and you realize, "Oh, okay." Um, 
And then other problem is that the rest of the episode, she's still trying to avoid the plot. So nothing actually happens in the first episode. Yeah. You don't really get a sense of what, you know, why you should watch more of the show. I love the premise. I love the characters. I think they did a great job of creating a parody of the cliche of a Otome game. And the bits of comedy we see would work if you're into and understand what, what all is going on. But the first episode, they just they went too hard for a certain yeah. approach and it just didn't really didn't come together very well for us. Yeah. Um so yeah, it's it's you know, I actually kind of want to go back and watch episodes two or three to see if this works well, because I think they just really stumbled to the gate. Yeah. Um, so if you like that, and again, it's one of those things, one of the reasons I'm explaining all of this too is I think if you go into it knowing that, you will probably laugh your butt off for the first half half, half of the yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not uh, play those games like I don't, I'm just kind of like going, wow, this is really bad animation. Then we come to yeah. out, oh, it was a game? <laughs> the game really actually at one point you were just like wait didn't the horse and carriage just go right up on the sidewalk i'm like yeah <laughs> yeah it did yeah it, it did and again i i think that was so at one point character is you know gets out of a carriage and it just you know goes off the side of the screen and the side of the screen is just a sidewalk in a building so yeah. they would have like walked gone into the building like what what's going on here but again i think that's a joke because it's the kind of visual right. you have in a visual novel um, kind of weird. Good question, Raka. I don't know if there's a term for that where a show presents itself as one thing and then does the twist. Um, it, uh, you know, appears to be superficial and then reveals more layers. I don't know. Yeah, red herring I, I, is, is yeah, the, the yeah, best yeah. term I know for. But yeah, there, there should be a term for that. Um, all right, moving on Ooh. to the weakest tamer began a journey to pick up Crash. Interesting one. Yeah. Main character is this little girl who is on the run for her life. She's clearly not had a great time of it. And the entire first episode is her gathering resources so she can strike out on her own. Um... Then you learn an interesting thing. Yes. So it is technically an isekai, except that the her past self has is in her mind, but she is the new person. So she is this this character, she is this person. She has access to the memories from her past self. She's gonna ask them questions. Um, it starts dark in tone. Right. I will say there, there's nothing particularly dark in the the um, scenes and sequences in, in the show. Like she's on the run. She's scared a, a little bit, but she also knows that it's coming. Right. Um, she, she's psychologically prepared as much as you can when you're like six. And then um, the last like half third of it is her, her psychologically thinking through the implications of what's going on and coming to a better place psychologically. Yeah. So it, it's one, to, <clears throat> one of the things that, that you learn immediately is that you see this little girl in trouble and your first response is somebody's going to save her and then he's going to be brother, mm -hmm. senpai, whatever. And, you know, and that's, what's going to happen. No, she's mm -hmm. on her own, but mm -hmm. she like, you know, as we're saying, She's going to various bolt holes that she has created over the past yeah. few weeks that has stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And the voice that is guiding her to do this, it's not like she's, you know, schizophrenic or anything. She's literally <laughs> just like, like, you know, oh, if is this what you mean? And you don't hear the voice. That's the other part. Right. It's a one-way conversation of her talking to herself, to her past self. And so she's able to do these things and gather these materials up and is able mm -hmm. to keep a step ahead mm -hmm. of the people the, the people you learn you know some technical stuff like the reason why they want to kill we think that one of the reasons why yeah. they want to kill her is because she has no stars everyone's born with a skill and a level of stars she is born with a skill tamer but no stars so mm -hmm. we 
think that's that that provides a curse on the village, and so everybody wants her dead. We think we don't mm-hmm. we, we don't know. So so the first part of it is her doing that is is doing the thing getting away yeah and then you get into this really nice kind of you see how a slime is is born actually yeah yeah and it's a rare kind of slime and she understands and she's got like these books compendiums and things Mm -hmm. to to help her guide or guide her through Mm -hmm. and she makes an effort to take care of this slime Mm-hmm. And then the story moves on from 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 yes. that. Um, so, um, I will say, mistreatment of children is kind of a trigger for me. Um, yeah. Not because I was mistreated as a child, but because that it just it just really did not sit well for me. I do not have a problem with that in this show. The way they portrayed it, right? Um, it's obviously uncomfortable. Like you 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 you, you, you get angry at those characters. But they, they handled it deftly. So if you yeah. out there, you know, are like, uh, I don't, I don't like that, you know, um, be aware. Yeah, there, there is. Yes, it's it. You know, the idea of hunting down a six year old and killing her is is yeah. is you know, it, it might be trigger enough. But fortunately, what we don't see that we have seen in past anime yeah. is the actual abuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a foregone conclusion. We the, <clears throat> the writer said we don't need to see that. Mm-hmm. We just need to see the girl doing her thing. Mm-hmm. And 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 as Brent was saying, coming to terms with that. Yeah. You know, and 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 learning to to deal with that with, mm-hmm. with the little slime. What's also nice is that the slime is like explicitly explained as kind of a metaphor for her, right? Yes. Like it is this very weak creature, it has a very short life. Not that she necessarily has a short life, but it's it's this very fragile thing. Um, and so as she's observing and deciding what to do with it, that's helping her think things through. So there's a there's some really um carefully thought out writing in this first episode. Um and nicely animated. So I'll be honest, it's one of those shows where I definitely want to watch more. I'm still a little reserved. I, I can see it going dark places, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm hopeful based on how they've been doing up to this point that is not too bad. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's carried with a rough start, so we'll see what they do with that. Um, and the witch and the beast boy, yeah. <coughs> man, how, how to describe this one? It was good, yeah, it was, it was well, I liked it, too. yeah, no, I, I liked it too, and it, uh, several shows this season. Where just this first episode was decisions were made. And sometimes you'll like those decisions, sometimes you won't. Um, Witch and the Beast is interesting. It's definitely Seinen. It's action thing. If you see... Um, so basically, witches exist. People know about them. They, they, they go around. They're generally regarded as a bad thing. Uh, they have all these crazy powers. Uh, the two main characters you see here are witch hunters, basically. Um, and uh, the the guy is a very, you know, the cool one. The girl is the hot one, in every sense. So she's you know okay. the, the hot tempered, hot headed. Yeah, I got 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 to go and take care of stuff. Uh, they come across a witch who seems to be nice and isn't. Shocker. Um, yeah. And no spoiler there. And then. It goes dark. Um, yeah. There are some really, really um, grim dark moments in this episode. Well, one in particular, I would say. Yes. And it just does feel like a little... It's, there's some stuff here that's for shock value. Right? Just yeah. There yeah. For, for that. Um, but it is big, bold, sane in action. Um, some cool stuff there. It, I would say, no, actually, big bold shonen action. I think it, it's seinen, and then once you get into the big action sequences, it gets kind of over the top shonen style, but I think in a way that fits the supernatural elements of yeah. the show. So, the thing was, is that as we were watching it, we were like, oh, which hunter Robin? Uh, Robin, 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that was kind of, and then there was a scene where mm-hmm. I just started yelling out land shark, land shark. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so there's some stuff in there that you're going to be like, yeah. uh, okay. And the reason why I say I like it is because I think it, it even though the, the first episode has some holes that it steps into, um, you know, I think there's a, I, I would like to see more to see the premise expand yeah. and, see if, and see if it goes somewhere. And that, enough enough to to to, to see if you I like it. Yeah. To that point, I was surprised that the first episode is about a which everybody likes. Yeah. When the what they come across is the idea that most most places in the world witches are feared and, and scared of. So it's kind of weird that they're starting with an anti pattern. Right. I think if they'd started with something that was a more traditional here, you know, there's some witch who's doing terrible things, gotta go and find her. I think that would also have sat better. Yeah. Um is it, again, it's kind of like what is actually going on in this world was hard to see, especially when the land shark shows up. Yeah. Um, so very atmospheric, very visual. If you like a show that has a, a gothic tone, it, this is one of those shows, definitely. Uh, gothic, gothic. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that is a you're 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 right. That 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 is weird. Very detailed art, by the way, on this. Um, you very much feel like you are in this city. And it's sort of a Eastern European esque city, like a Budapest yeah. kind of a thing. Um so yeah, it, it's a distinctive style. Um and yeah, the, the poster poster actually feels to me more like a uh supernatural romance novel cover <laughs> yeah right <laughs> the witch and the beast yeah. kind of love transcend the boundaries <laughs> of man and evil <laughs> someone get that on amazon real quick <laughs> um so kind of like some other things i think it's one of those things that will uh it's a little more binary than other shows that kind of turn you on or turn you off yeah um but uh uh cool very yeah. cool and that is it those are the 34 episodes we watched. Wow. These past couple of weeks.